in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're going to continue from where we left off just a few hours ago. Ways to move in a new level in Christ. Every year, no doubt, we make a resolution what we're going to do, what we want to achieve. We look within ourselves and see what is missing and what need to be fulfilled. But I just come by to remind us all that only what we do for Christ will last. It is amazing how the enemy had have us fooled that in this life that we have to accumulate so much to achieve so much just to leave it to rot and to be destroyed. Ain't that something? I look around Freeport and even persons who are very rich, the hotel elaborated. The restaurants are closed. Ain't that something? None of them was able to carry it with them. So at the end of the day, what have they achieved in this life? We have a very narrow window. Amen. We don't have the luxury like Methuselah who lived 969 years. We don't have that luxury. And we are reminded by David. So Lord help us to number our days. Just as sure as the sun rise in the east and set in the west. Every tick of the clock is closer to his coming or us leaving. Whether we want to accept it or not, it's reality. And no one, nobody can change that reality. Ain't that something? God had set the laws and no one is able to amend, adjust, remove, or refute the laws of God. But I want to continue in the base scripture for those who's in here a few hours to go in John 17 and 11. And we are sharing about Jesus praying for unity that his people will be one. This prayer of unification was not only for his disciples, but for all he had called. From the master's lips to every believer heart. So we will show forth the relationship between father and son. And as we move on, how can we unify ourselves? How can I get stronger? How can I move from one level to another? It is amazing from the beginning, God had set the rules. But if we look closer, he said, seek and ye shall find, knock and the door shall be open.
And when we look into the book of Hebrews 10 and 25, togetherness gave us the voice of unity. The Hebrew writer, he said, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting means encouraging one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. If you have your Bible, I want you to underline the word as you see the day approaching. Now one may wonder what is that day approaching? There is only two important days in front of us. The day of the Lord, when he should come, or the day of our departure. That is the only two important days in front of us. What you and I have to do to fulfill our pleasure on this earth is not important. Are you hearing me? Than these two days. So I want you to place those two days in the memory bank. That the two most important day I have to face. It's the day of the Lord, that's when he shall come, or when I should leave this earth. Hello, somebody. The day of our eternal rest. We should absorb all the signs that is approaching us. When we listen to the news, we can hear what's happening in the East. When we look at our body, we can know what is happening. It's giving us signs. Are you hearing me? Psalms 90 and 10. David lived 70 years. He reigned 40 out of that 70. And he moved on. We can see throughout the Bible, throughout the scriptures, where men who was on the face of the earth, but they had to leave after a while. I said, Lord, it's such an amazing thing to see that according to Psalms 90 and 10, the days of our years are three score Yes, and ten. Watch this now. And if by reason of strength, there will be four score years. As the Lord, we're going from 969 to barely reach 80 and plus. Great God from Zion. After the flood, God cut the years right down. Are you hearing me? What have we done wrong? We have gone away from the peaceful shore. We took God's church and turned it into an entertainment center. God will hold us accountable. But that's why when you see men are doing what they want to, leave them alone. Their days are numbered. And we do wonder why, in between 80 years, people dying at 50, 40, 20. Young people do not make this mistake and say to yourself or listen to the enemy, I'm only 25. Hello, somebody. I want to share this with you. The reason why many are leaving early because we are not doing what the master say do. Hello, somebody. Watch this. Watch this. Three score and ten. A score is twenty. 
Three score is 60, plus 10 is 70. By reason of strength, great God from Zion. Watch this now. By reason of strength, labor and sorrows. What are you talking about? Pain all over the place. Holly could walk. Holly could see. Holly could move. Holly could recognize anybody. But thanks be unto God who loved the Lord. God will keep your faculties intact until he shall come or he shall call. Do I hear somebody? My friends and my neighbors, I'm going to ask you to place your trust in this God. It doesn't matter how we feel now. It doesn't matter what I achieve now. I have to leave it all alone. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Three score and ten. Three score and ten. Three score and ten. How many of us God rest her soul. I know our dear Mother Russell who live in Pennsylvania live 103. How many live that years? How many more years you and I have on our lives? Think about it. No, if I don't think about it, we better. Because of David said, Lord, help me to number my days. Hello, somebody. Knows you're scaring me. You speaking? No, I didn't say it. And if David recognized that he have to leave, then he made sure that within the time frame in which he lived on this earth, that he pleases the Lord. How can we move? Watch this now. How can we move in a new level in Christ? Watch this. Young people, take note. The reason why many of us are leaving, we call it, nowadays, they give it a fancy name, stress. Stress. But I want to share with you today, God our Father, who made man according to the genesis of time, watch this now, knew that the day will come when the generation will go after things rather than him. I want a new car. I need a new house. I need a house on the canal. I need another job. I need another business. I need a plane. I need a new truck. I need another wife. I need another husband. I need everything is I need, I need for me, for me. Watch this. Watch this. God the Father who knew that his crown jewel, God crown jewel is man. Ain't that something? Why you see that nose? On the sixth day, the last thing God made was man. Oh, you're hearing me. Then he said, according to Genesis 1, 26 to 31, he said, let them have dominion over the earth. But through the avenue of time, he saw that man will go into a hustle and a bustle to accumulate things on this earth. Watch this now. Look what the father did. Because he knew. I'm going into something. Watch this. According to Genesis 23, 10 to 12. Let's go there. Exodus, sorry. Exodus 23, 10 to 12. Exodus 23, 
10 to 12. I'm going to show you how we can get into another level with God and live the full life he promised us. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? He said, six years you shall sow your land and gather its produce. Now watch God. If God who created the heaven and the earth notice who are me and you or scientists can come behind and alter what God said. Watch this now. He said, six years you shall, watch what? Sow your land and gather its product. Move on. Next verse. He said, but the seventh year, notice, the seventh year you should let it rest. Mm. And lie, follow that the poor and your people may eat and what they leave the beasts of the field may eat in like manner you shall do with your vineyard and your olive trees watch this follow means watch follow me Leave the land alone so it can restore its fertile. But because man want so much and wanted so much and make so much money, now the land is crying. That's why it don't produce. Because God says so. And when Jesus came, he didn't even touch it. Have you noticed that? So what man do now? Man find another way. Call it hydro what? Formic. That's the name. Hydrophonic, aponic, the process of growing plants in sand, gravel, and liquid. Because the land is crying out and refused to produce. So man find another avenue to produce. Now, The body came from the dust. Watch this now. How can now gravel liquid? Watch this now. And sand give us proteins what the body needs. We're killing ourselves. Hello, somebody. Boy, this look good, eh? Man, this tastes good. But what is happening, it's killing us. Cancer is ramping. Check the statistics. How many people die from cancer? Because of what we intake. Watch this. Let's go a little further. Let's go to Leviticus. Leviticus 25. Let's start from verse 1. Leviticus 25. We're going into the area. Now watch this now. 
God said in the beginning, let the land rest. Now I'm going to show you something else what God said. But because we are so intelligent, we are so smart, we become smarter than the creator. Hello, somebody. Are you following me? And the Lord spoke to Moses on Mount Sinai saying, next verse, speak to the children of Israel and say to them, when you come into the land which I give you, then the land shall be kept as a serpent to the Lord. What? Excuse me? The land? A serpent? To the Lord? The seventh year, God said, leave the land alone that the land do no work. I didn't say it. It's amazing that's right now Bible A. And so what do we do? We get so smart, the boy, this thing ain't producing no more. So we put this with God make, this with God make, this with God make, mix them together, call it fertilize, and finish kill the land. So it could produce. Now watch this. Give me the next verse, verse 3. Six years you shall sow your field, and six years you shall prune your vineyard and gather its fruit. Next verse. But in the seventh year, this, listen now, again. We just read it earlier. We're going to read it again. On the seventh year, there shall be a Sabbath of solemn rest. Solemn rest rest for the land. If land need rest, what do you think about me and you? You see why we're dying? Keep pushing. We leave sooner than we should. Hello, somebody. Now, I didn't say this. God said this. So please don't get upset with me on this first day. The Lord said this. And if we can get over God, then go ahead. Talk, God. You should need to sow your field, not prune your vineyard. Next verse. What grow of its own, on its own accord, of your harvest, you should not reap. Whatever grows within a seventh year, do not reap, nor gather the grapes of your unattended vine, for it is a year of the rest of the land. Now, God made the land in the Genesis 1. He should know what to say, right? He made it, right? Now, more than the land he made, talk to us. Verse 5. 6, sorry. And the serpent produce of the land shall be food for you. For you, your male and female servants, your hired man and the stranger who dwells in your house or with you. Next verse. For your livestock and the beasts that are in your land, all is produced shall be for food. Now, if God says that about the land, what is he saying about us? What is he saying to us? Is God, did God talk to us? Did God talk to me and you? Let's move on. 
Let's go to Leviticus 23. One to three. And the Lord, who's speaking? Wait, that's something, eh? God talking to man. The eternal. If God were to speak to you and I today, I think we faint. We fall out. We can't handle it. Saying, speak to the children of Israel. And say to them that the feast of the Lord, which you shall proclaim, will be holy convocation. These are my feasts. Give me verse 3. Six days. Notice where you're going now. Six days shall Work be done. Now watch why we die in early. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of solemn rest. Underline that. Now the rest is not the rest which you're thinking about rest. I'm going to show it to you. A holy convocation, you shall do no work on it. It is the Sabbath of the Lord and all your dwelling. Now watch this. But we don't do nothing with the Sabbath. We, we finish with the Sabbath. Nah, nah, that's the trouble. We say we finish with this. Oh, did we? Watch this. Watch this. Sabbath. It's a gathering, God designed it for ourselves emotionally and spiritually to rest and turn our attention and energy to him. But you know what man says Sabbath is? Come on Saturday, we sing a few songs, and we keep it, don't say nothing, and we go home, they call it holy. No. If you study the Hebrew, this is what they did. As a matter of fact, the Hebrew Sabbath starts from Friday sundown to Saturday sundown, and after an hour after sundown on Saturday. So the Hebrew Sabbath is 25 hours, not 24. Now watch this. God told him, do do no work. Why would God say do no no work? He wanted us to bring ourselves emotionally and spiritually. Why do you think some people are going crazy? Out of their mind. Because we refuse to set a time aside that called the Sabbath to the Lord so we can be emotionally and spiritually rest and turn our energy and attention to God. That means you plug in and you recharge in. Hello, somebody. Mats Mare. Your battery in your car. For every time you start it, it drains it. But the man so smart, he said, he knew that, look here, for every time this car starts, it drains the battery. So I got to put a mechanism in there called the generator to recharge it. So if the battery needs recharging and God said you need a rest, why are we working so hard seven days a week? We're going to die soon. 
we stressing ourselves right out. Trying to accumulate everything that we're going to leave. And when we come on time for Sabbath, we want to give God a ping, a ping service. What that means? The microwave. Boop, boop, boop. Bing. They've got a ping service. Bing. Time to go. You preach too long. You sing too long. You shout too long. You pray too long. But he said, rest. Why are we? I'm talking to me too. Running ourselves prematurely under the ground to leave everything. Yes. When God say, all your work, six days. Do it everything with six days. But this one day, now you thought God is only doing that to, just to, for him. Eh? No, he's doing that for us. Physically, we will be regenerated when we take a Sabbath unto the Lord. But get the word, the meaning Sabbath. The Jews' Sabbath was a Saturday. Our Sabbath can be set. If our Sabbath is Sunday morning, the Sunday evening, one o'clock, two o'clock, or three o'clock. How many of us? Listen. What you think of the day is how you will act to the day. What you think of God is the way you act to God. What you think of a man is the way you act to a man. Hello? Someone will come and I'll give them the same script and let them preach it. And you'll say, oh my God, I've never heard that before. You know why? Because what you think of me is different than what you think of him. That's why many miss God when he's talking. So what are we going to do in 2023? Are we going to change our ways? In order to change our ways, a mind has to be renewed. And when we consecrate ourselves emotionally and spiritually unto God, all our energy unto God, then he revitalizes us emotionally, spiritually, and we can go again. And so doing what we do, we move now to a different level. Hello, somebody. We move into a different realm. We regenerate and we keep on moving. We say we want to move, aren't we? So here is a good place to start. Well, I tell you, by the time we reach home now, half of us can go cook. Some of us going to read, probably start painting the house. Well, Christmas gone anyway. Or whatever we have to do, because what tomorrow is Monday and I have to listen. The world system say, go, go, go. This is what God is teaching. It's an insult to the system of the world. The world said, look here, I need speed, speed, speed. I need it now, now, now. And what they're saying, you're going to die, die, die. And when, I, when you die, I kick you, I can bring somebody else in. And we'll kill them too. Am I helping you? God have mercy. 
when we take ourselves, our being, and meditate unto God, listen now, the children of Israel used to reflect on what God had brought them out of bondage. So they give God the accolades, Lord, we thank you for taking us out of the hands of Pharaoh. Brought us through the Red Sea, brought us through the Jordan River, feed us with manna in the wilderness. Our clothes didn't wear out. Our shoes didn't wear out. And you brought us into the promised land. And God said, don't kill it. Wake it for six years. And leave it for one year to replenish itself. Are you hearing me? But what do we do today? Our Sabbath. Now watch this now. Don't we have nothing to reflect on? The master himself leave the splendors of heaven, took off his royal robe, laid it down, prepare his spirit in the fullness of time after nine months to enter into a body which Mary will bring forth, called the Son of God. Now watch this. You notice, you notice, when Jesus came, he came in a body. Hello, somebody. And he did all what God required him to do. Redeem mankind. He came to redeem God's crown glory. Hello? Now, if you don't think you're precious to the Lord, then I'm so sorry. But me, Linwood Lemuel Theodore knows, you're looking at God's crown glory, which had fallen. And now Jesus came to redeem you and I back to the Father. Isn't that enough to meditate on? Not only that, he declared his word. He left it for you and I to read, to meditate. And the more we meditate, the more revelation knowledge comes. Watch this now. Watch this now. When I think about his goodness and what he done for me, my soul cry out, hallelujah, hallelujah. And listen, and when we meditate emotionally, spiritually, and turn our attention to God, then everything that await us Carrying weight will drop off. Why? Because we're being recharged. We're being renewed by our creator. So don't you think God know what we need? You know what man say? It's outdated. Okay. Keep going. You start dropping, I can start charging you for funeral. If I'm still here. Hello, somebody. You and I say we want to rise higher. We want to rise higher. Meditate. Would God has allowed his son to do for us. Notice, the same thing God did with Adam in the garden, commune with him, didn't he? In the cool of the day, didn't he? 
He wants the same thing now with you and I to commune with us on the day of rest. So are we going to continue to push ourselves? No, man, you don't know how good it feels to be wealthy. I know it's a good feeling, but after that good feeling passed after 80 years, then what? Then what? Forever? Lost? So let us set our Sabbath before the Lord. Watch this now. Sabbath is a time of rest, and Sabbath is not a religion. Are you hearing me? It's not a religion, but man turned it into a religion. That's why we gotta be careful. Don't take nothing I say, search it. He says, seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. In my closing, among the Jewish nation on their Sabbath, meditating on God. Watch this now. Then they meditate on the family, thanking God for the family. Who created the family? Hello? God made man. And then he says, not good for man to be alone. I'll make him a help meet. But our smarties today, the God ain't know what he was doing. Let's go for Romans 1. We can preach that one day. Man with man, woman with woman, doing things that is unseemly. God call it an abomination. I don't care what the government call it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the king call it. It's still an abomination. Are oh, you hearing me? If God wanted man with man or woman with woman, then he'll make a woman that's trying to make another one. God, look where I am today. Read Romans 1, somewhere down the 12th chapter. Down the, listen, that's the clearest I've ever seen that will leave no question in mind. You know what man say, you know what the world say? That's done away with. Oh yeah, that's in front of us. It's in front of us. So young people, clear your mind. College student, clear your mind. Hello, somebody. Pause your husband, love your wife. How could, oh Jesus, have mercy. let me stay on the text. The Jewish, Nation, watch this now. When they meditate spiritually on their Sabbath, they thank God for their family, they thank God for their friends. You notice, they are selfish, and they thank God for their neighbors. How much of us pray for our neighbors? Some of us can't stand our neighbors. How can we win them to Christ? Hello, somebody. Pray for them. Lift them up before the Lord. They curse you, they persecute you, but still, lift them up before the Lord. Are you hearing me? And you know what? When we do this, we will experience what Jesus said in John 14 and 27. Give me that last one, please. 
And I'm close on this one. Am I helping you here? He said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world giver do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Listen, when you and I take time out to go in meditation on a Sabbath to the Lord, peace will come. Peace of mind. Peace of spirit. Peace of soul. Hallelujah. And when we have peace, where stress can come in? Where craziness can come in? Release that mind, man. Go in a Sabbath to the Lord and lay it all before him. You're too small and we're too frail to carry the Lord. Tell him, Lord, I have sinned. I thought I could do this alone, but I found out I take more tablets now every day than I used to just to keep his body going. And the more I take, the more the doctor tells me I need to take just to keep me going. Then when I take more and more, then I find out what I take for this now, it affects this. And what I take for this, it now is like this. God has given us a solution. While we move up in him, rest. Rest. Look to your neighbor and say, neighbor, rest in God. When last the time you and I rest? We're too busy. I have to do this. I have to do that. I have to do that. And when the body drops down, it still ain't done. It's still there to be done. Hello. Rest your mind. Peace. We're going to practice a word, a Jewish word, which means peace. Shalom. Shalom. Are you hearing me? The peace Jesus leave, the peace Jesus give. Watch this now. Which is comprised of the whole man, physical, emotional wholeness. Would you say no? Nothing broken, nothing missing. No, so what about the house on fire? It's on fire. No, it's my house going to be taken away. Take it. My car note. The bank of repossession. I'm going to be embarrassed. Take it. I'm going to rest. I'm going to rest. So I get another house. Better than the one they take. I'll get a car. Better than the one they take. When you rest. In the Lord. Can we practice that? By the grace of God. My God, some of us, like me, we got to get up and go like we got to go. When God say, rest in me, my son. Rest. Nothing will be missing. Nothing will be broken. It doesn't matter what's happening around you. You still have peace. The world on fire, you still got peace. I've lost my job, you still got peace. My child got thrown of school, you still got peace. The inner peace is above all circumstances. 
Shalom, I live with you. My shalom, I give you. Not as the world give. Shalom is transcendent. My last note. Transcendent means beyond or above the range of normal or, or physical human existence. That's when you're in the realm of the spirit. Shalom, Brother Hartley. Shalom, Brother Sister Pinder. Shalom, Sister Cox. Shalom, Mother Hart. Shalom, Minister T. Shalom to the heels. Shalom to the Ramings. Shalom to the Davises. Shalom to the nose. Don't we want that peace? It's here, you know. But you know what? We were going around it all the time. But because we listened to religion, we missed it. We missed it. That's why when Jesus came on the Sabbath day of the Jew, he went on the cornfield and started breaking corn. Hello. He said, I am Lord of the Sabbath. Now I am here. Rest in me. I took all your burdens, all your sins, everything. I took it on the cross. So now there's no excuse if we die prematurely. And we're going to pray and we're going to curse every genetic disease that is antagonizing your body in the mighty name of Jesus. We curse it to the root and shalom will come and shalom will be in the homes of your soul. Stand with me for a second. Great God from Zion. Make a declaration. I declare of this day that I will place a Sabbath in my schedule unto the Lord. That I will have peace in my spirit and my soul and in my body. In Jesus name. Father we come against every opposing spirit this is your word, Lord. Your Sabbath was not a religion. It was a time of rest. You didn't even say, Lord, do this or do that in your house. But Father, we come and we give you the honor, we give you the praise for what you have done. Now, Lord, every genet genetic disease from either side of the family, you told us greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. We curse it to the root and it will not pass to the next generation. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We adore you. In the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Shalom. Shalom. <clears throat> Thank you.
Let's give the Lord another round of applause, a clap of praise. You may be seated. Wasn't that an awesome word this morning? Perfect word to start off 2023. It's so interesting that yesterday, while talk, talking to a group of guys, trying to get them to come to church. They were trying to explain all the reasons why they don't come to church or he ain't coming to watch night service or he ain't coming to church because they could do it at home. This actually, this topic actually came up about the Sabbath. So it's interesting that Pastor came here this morning and even spoke about the Sabbath and its significance. And I want us to be reminded exactly of what he said. The Sabbath is not a religion. Man made it a religion, and that was the conversation we had yesterday, but it's not. There's a specific purpose for it in our lives, specifically when it comes to us connecting with our creator. Amen? And the thing about that, what he said, I like the most is, when you observe it the way the creator wanted you to, it brings a peace to you. It brings a peace in the midst of your chaos. Because we know this world is, and our daily schedules and lives is filled with so many things. But when you take that time to just pause, it brings a peace. Let us not forget those words. Amen? Now, before we go into our announcements, I just want to welcome some persons in the midst. We have Mr. and Mrs. Stewart in our midst. That's, that's the family of Sister Doris. You got, they were out last night as well, right? Yes, yes, you were out last night and they, and they doubled back this morning. So thank you so much for coming. It is truly our hope and prayer that you guys were blessed by both services last night and this morning. Amen? I see we have the Pinders. Their son is back in our midst. Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back, my brother. <laughs> Come get some of that peas and rice. No fried chicken. You know they can't cook over there. <laughs> Not like how we do it over here. Hope you enjoy your time while you're here. The young lady didn't get your name. April? Okay. Nice to have you, April. <laughs> All right. Amen. Now, I want to highlight a very special person in our midst today, and that's none other than our daughter, Nevaeh. Stand up, Nevaeh. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, who tell you say, start, sit down, start back up? Yes. For those of you that don't know, today is actually her birthday. <laughs> she turned 16 today. So this is her sweet, sweet 16th birthday. <laughs> So, say Lord up. <laughs> yes, yeah, so um, I want us, first of all, before we sing happy birthday for her, let me just highlight some of the things that this girl does. She is an awesome child. She does very well in school. This is her first year in BMES, and she's excelling in BMES. <laughs> And beyond that, she takes part in the dance ministry. And even on you Sundays, she stands in front of here like she's been doing it for not 16 years, 61 years. You know, like. And if you haven't heard any of her messages, please go on YouTube, on FNC's YouTube page, and look for her. Because the things that she said up here was amazing coming out of her mouth. Let's just give her a hand once again. 
So we're going to sing happy birthday for her, and after that we'll have announcements. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. 